Hey guys, this is Mitch with Finepoint CGI, and today we're going to talk about signals inside of Godot. So this is a basic tutorial where we are going to be creating signals. We're going to be connecting those signals. We're going to be sending signals via one scene and attaching them to another scene. And we're going to be sending data through those signals. So sending arguments and stuff like that. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first question is, what is a signal? And a signal is basically an event that your code is broadcasting. So it will broadcast an event saying, hey, I need you to do something or I am completed with something. Everybody who cares about that bit of code completing, go ahead and run your bit of code. So, and you can pass objects and data between those signals as well, right? So you could say, hey, I've completed some code and here's an object that I have for you to use for whatever it is that you need. And you can pass that data in. Now, signals are really useful. They are slower than normal code by a large amount, but they are really easy to code and they're very easy to use. So in order to demonstrate the basics of signals, I'm going to go ahead and create a 2D scene. So I'm going to right click my node 2D. I'm going to add in a child node. I'm going to add in a button and that's going to allow me to have a button for my user interface here. And I'm going to right click on my node 2D. I'm going to add in another child node and I'm going to add in a node 2d as well i'm going to name this node 2d receiver and what we can do is we can connect a signal to our receiver our receiver has to have a script on it for it to receive that signal call so what we'll do is we'll right click and we will attach a script and we're just going to call it receiver.gd and we'll click on our button and we'll go to node and we'll say on button down, and this is where all of your signals are. And you can see that there are a bunch of signals that you can connect. So if we go ahead and click on our button down, and then we click on our receiver and we click connect, you'll see that it creates a function here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say print button has been pressed. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play and we will save our scene. And you can see when I click this button, you'll see button has been pressed will come into our output. That is a signal. So when you press this button, a signal gets broadcasted. A receiver says, hey, I'm listening for that signal. And then it get calls this little bit of code once that signal gets received. So that's really cool that we can connect them through the editor, but how would we go about connecting them through code? Well, I'm gonna show you two ways. The first one is if I take this button and I put it underneath my receiver and I disconnect that signal and I right click and disconnect it, now it's no longer gonna call this bit of code anymore. As a matter of fact, I'll show you so that way you guys can see that. If I click on it, nothing happens, right? Because I disconnected it. But if I go into receiver and I say dollar sign button and I get a reference to that object and I go dot connect, you'll see that I have a list of signals here. And I'm going to say button down, which was the same one that we did here. So you can see right here, button down, comma, self, comma, on button down. And what that's going to do is that's going to call and connect this signal to this function. So when this button gets pressed, it's going to call this function. Hey guys, editor Mitch here. So one of the things that I forgot to cover is uh, the arguments on the connect here. So the first argument there that's highlighted is your button down. Okay. And that's the actual signal that you're connecting to. So your button, your dollar sign button is your reference to your object dot connect is connecting to that signal and then 
button down is the actual signal name. Argument two is, is self, and self means that it's the object that's going to be running the code. So it doesn't necessarily need to be the specific object in this um, script. It can be any object. You could technically dollar sign, you know, um, button and send the signal to the button and tell it to run on button down if you wanted to. So there isn't a rule that says that you have to connect to the signal by itself. You could have a script on Node2D and tell Node2D to tell receiver to run some code. And that's completely valid. And the last one is on button down. Now that is the function it's going to be running. So it doesn't care what the name is as long as those two names match, Godot will find it because it does it through reflection. What it does is it searches your script for a function that has that exact name and then it sends a, hey, you should execute to that function. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure I cleared that up. Let's get back to the video. So you can see if I hit play and I click, you'll see that we once again get our button has been pressed. So that's how you connect them through code. Now, what would happen if you want to create your own signal? Well, let's go ahead and right click our receiver, add in a child node, and let's add in a node 2D. And then let's go ahead and click on that and call it sender. So it's going to send a signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click this, attach a child node. We'll call it sender.gd. That's fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a signal. So first we need to go ahead and type signal. And we'll say sender is ready. And you'll see that as soon as we create the signal, we can actually click on our sender and you'll see there is a sender is ready. So we can hook this up by just double clicking on it and clicking it to receiver, right? And then we can just have that function right here, or we can connect it by saying dollar sign sender dot connect sender is ready comma self comma. And then we could say something like quote underscore on underscore sender underscore sender is ready. And if we have this function here, then it would call the code inside of this function, much like what we're doing down here. So remember, these two options are the exact same. The only difference is that you don't see this little icon in your actual GUI here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, and stick with the GUI based connection first, and we'll go from there. So what we can do is we can go into our sender and we can say, Hey, on ready, let's emit that signal. Let's go ahead and broadcast that signal saying, Hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to do my thing. I'm good to go. Okay. So we can say emit signal sender is ready. And what that's going to do is it's going to emit a signal out immediately as soon as this object instantiates. So what we'll do is we'll go to our receiver and we will say print sender is ready. So when I refresh this, you'll see I get a sender is ready signal broadcasted to me. Now, how does this extend to a scene? I know that's a common question that is asked. Well, what we can do is we can right click our receiver and let's go ahead and just save branch as scene and let's just save it as receiver. So if we go over to receiver, you can see we have our sender who is connected to our receiver you will see that our receiver is right here and you can see that everything is, is great, right? Well, what if we wanted Node2D to connect to receiver's sender code? 
Well, we could come over here, but you see that it doesn't exist, right? There, that's not here. So how are we going to get our Node2D to pick up on our receiver? Maybe Node2D wants to know that the sender is ready, right? So we can right click this, attach a script, and let's just call it game manager. Let's say on ready, we're going to go ahead and get a reference to our nodes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say get tree dot root dot find node quote, and I got to find my node. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my button instead of finding my sender um, because I got a feeling that my sender is not going to be correct and it's going to uh, fire this off before uh, it'll fire off this signal probably before my game manager initializes fully so instead i'm just going to go off the button it'll be a little easier so we'll say on button down so we'll say find node button dot connect and then we'll say button down so button underscore down. And I believe it's capital. Nope, no capital B. So it's just button down, comma, self, comma, underscore on, underscore button, underscore down, we'll say. And again, this doesn't need to be on button down. It can be whatever you want it to be. You could name it Frank if you want to, and it wouldn't care. As long as you have the same name here as you do on your button down it will be fine so we will go ahead and print quote game manager button down and now if we hit play and we get a attempted to call function connect on base null instance so that's never a good sign let me see did i spell button wrong because i'm famous for my spelling skills Nope, that's not quite right. So, ah, I need to finish up my find node function here. That's what's going on. So I will say button, comma. The first Boolean is if it's recursive. So we'll say true, comma, owned. We will say false. And let's see if that does it. So we'll go ahead and hit play. We click and you'll see game manager button down. So our game manager here connected to this scenes node right here and pulled back that signal. So that's kind of how you do between node signals. Now, the question is, is how do you pass data between different signals? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect, I'm gonna disconnect this button here from our project. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this function here. So that way we're not doing that anymore. I'm going to go to our receiver and I'm going to go to our sender here and I'm going to look at the code real quick. And we are going to connect this button on button down to our sender and we'll go ahead and connect that. And what we'll say is we will emit signal sender is ready comma and we can pass in as many arguments as we want. So if we were to pass in something like the sender button has been pressed, we can do that. Okay. And you can just keep going as far as you want and as many as you want. You can pass in whatever you would like here and it will take it. Now, in my case, I'm just doing this. If I save this and I go to my node 2D and I come up to my function and we do the same thing that we did before, get underscore tree dot root and the reason why I'm doing this a second time is so that you guys understand how to do this. Dot find node quote. And we'll say sender comma true comma false. Now, the reason why you're doing false on the second one is if you do, if it searches for sender and it finds a node, they it finds sender, it will try to get its parent node, which would in this case be receiver. And since receiver doesn't have the signal we're looking for, it doesn't work. So we'll say dot 
connect and we will connect our sender is ready. So let's grab that sender is ready and we'll paste that in. And then we will say, connect that self comma quote sender is ready. And then we can grab this little bit of code here, bring this down and say funk sender is ready. And then we can pass in our arguments right here. And then we can just go ahead and print our arcs. So what that's going to do, whoops, arg, not args. And what that's going to do is when we refresh this and we click this, you will see button has been pressed. The sender button has been pressed. And the reason why is because this signal was emitted and passed in this data right here. Now, one other easy way to find your node other than just using find node is to use groups. So if we go back to our receiver, we click on our sender, we go to our nodes, we click on groups and we just go ahead and type, I don't know, sender, let's say. We can add that and go ahead and copy it by clicking this little icon. If we go back to our node, we can actually basically get rid of most of this and say, dot get tree dot get nodes in group quote sender and then i'm going to get the first element off of that and then that basically will get back the exact same thing now this technically is more efficient than find node but also you are going to get back an array so if you have multiple senders in your group that are name that are under that group then this method will not work so if I refresh and I click, you will see the sender button has been pressed because it went and found the specific sender we're looking for, connected that signal to my object, and then ran this little bit of code. So senders are super useful. They're very good at being able to run code once your code is ready. They are a little on the slower side and they do require an object reference but that's kind of a small price to pay for the power that you get out of signals. So, you know, I hope that this video has helped you guys out. So we went over what a signal is. We went over why you might want to use a signal. We went over how to get signals and send signals. We talked about how to create signals. We also talked about how to send and receive signals from um, scene to scene. And we talked about how to get nodes that are inside of scenes from a different scene. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. Now, this video was a viewer suggested video as with all of my videos. So if you have a suggestions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to get to it. I know there has been some people asking for Blender tutorials, so I am looking into that. And I did hear of some people asking for some multiplayer tutorials. So I'm also looking into that. And if you have any questions or comments, please throw them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to talk to you about anything. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all next time. Thanks.